Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Yay! Oh, awesome scripture, Pastor. I love it. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I love both parts of that. Lying down, resting, drinking tea, green pastures, provision. Love it. <laughs> he leads me behind, beside the quiet waters. I love peace, Pastor. That's, man, that's a great scripture. He refreshes my soul. I love that lemonade, man. That's just awesome. He guides me along the right paths for, my na- for, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the, the darkest valley, or some say the valley, the shadow of death. That's not quite so much fun. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, you know, a shepherd has a staff he leads his sheep with. That same staff becomes a rod. When that little sheep is getting close to the edge, he just takes that staff, turns it over, prods that little sheep, right? Get back on the path. Listen, if you can't receive the prod, you'll never receive the green pastures. If all you celebrate is the staff, you're never going to enjoy the peace. You're never going to have the quiet waters. If you're going to receive him as your shepherd, you must receive his correction. Independent and offended people, however, don't like correction. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul again talking to Pastor Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead in view of his appearing and of his kingdom, I give you this charge, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Then what does it say? What's the word? Everyone say it. Correct. What's the next one? Rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Why did he put correct and rebuke first? Why didn't he say, now just gently try to instruct them. Because sometimes offended people need rebuked. See, if you'll not receive the rebuke, you might as well save your energy trying to instruct. Because they have not received you as an authority in their life. Right? If you cannot receive correction, you will not receive instruction. Well, who does, who do they think they are? What gives you, what what gives them the right to speak into my life? Well, that's a good question. You do. You do. So let me ask you a question right now. Who, if I ask you, give me a name right now, who in your life would God use to speak correction to your life? Most of you are out of your home. You're raised. I don't know. Who, Who would do it now? Your boss? Your pastor? Your parents, I mean, I mean who, who is it that you look to and trust for correction? I hear this a lot with kids. You're not the boss of me. You ever heard kids say, you're not the boss of me? <laughs> I heard one of our little grandchildren tell her, she was telling her brother, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, are you an orphan? Definition of an orphan is someone with no parents and no parental care or concern. As you know, orphans are all about themselves, right? And no inheritance. Yeah, orphans take care of themselves, right? Come on. There's no one else. They learn how to survive. They're survivalists, right? Orphans live in a house but do not have a home. They don't have a father or mother. They have associations. Orphans submit out of a survival mindset and posture themselves what they can receive. Their heart is always preoccupied with what they can get for themselves. When an opportunity presents itself, they abandon anything else, always looking for themselves. Orphans submit because there is something in it for them. Orphans attract orphans. Let me give you a hint, leaders. You cannot build with orphans. You can only build with sons and daughters. Well, how do I know who the sons and daughters are? Who do I know who owns the vision? Who do I know who consider themselves that this is their house, whatever, your business or whatever? How do I know who is? Well, if you have a group of kids in the backyard, right, 10 kids, the neighborhood kids are there, and you, you hear a parent cry out into the yard, Get, you know, come into the house, kids. 
only two kids come into the house. Why? Because only two kids were the kids of the parent that said, come in the house. The rest of the kids have other parents, right? So how do I find out? You give them something to do. You see if they submit to authority. You find out who your kids are really fast, your sons and daughters, who you can build with by giving them responsibility. If they respond and they carry it out, you found your kids. King David, we talked about King David quite a bit. We talked about Absalom, remember? Absalom's David's son, King David, his son. We talked about his rebellion against King David and what happened to him in the end. Step number eight on our eight steps of disloyalty, what happened to him? He died, a rebel's death. His brother, Adonijah, we haven't talked about him yet, have we? You see, when David was at the end of his life, he was in bed, knowing his time of death was close. Adonijah, who was Absalom's brother, basically in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, put himself forward or basically declared himself king. He said, I will be king. I said he declared himself king. The king did not appoint him as king. He declared himself king. So he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. Notice what verse 6 said. His father had never rebuked him by asking, why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome and was born next after Absalom. Uh, can you guess what happened to him? He died a rebel's death. He died. Whose responsibility was that? Hmm. He was never corrected. Parents, the Bible says to correct your children. See, he never learned the order or how authority operated. He died a rebel's death. Orphans speak out against authority anytime they want to, to whoever they want to, whenever they want to. Why? Because they don't live under authority. They judge others' decisions. They armchair other leaders' decisions. And here's what happens when you put an orphan in charge, leaders. Proverbs 10, 17. Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Now, most people have a wrong view of correction. They feel they, uh, correction must, you know, a failure has occurred. They must have failed at something, right? If I'm corrected, I must have failed. No, that is absolutely the wrong view of what correction is. You would not have a light bulb unless Edison failed at making a light bulb. You would not be driving a car unless someone failed at making a car. You would not be flying in an airplane unless someone failed at flying an airplane. In Father's house, your performance is not how your relationship is determined. Your identity in Christ is not determined by your performance, but your promotion is. Write this down. Being corrected and trained is a privilege. Being corrected and trained or given instruction is a privilege. Someone cares for your destiny. You need to celebrate that. 